name is Samah Wahda. I'm the Director for Urban and Territorial Development, Disaster Risk Management and Resilience at the Social, Urban, Rural and Resilience Global Practice of the World Bank Group. I'm going to talk to you today about competitive cities for jobs and growth. This is a multi-practice cross-sectoral work that we have done together at the Social, Urban, Rural and Resilience Global Practice together with the Trade and Competitiveness Global Practice and it was funded by a multi-donor trust fund at the World Bank, the Competitive Industries and Innovation Program. My lecture will comprise of four parts. The first is why is city competitiveness important? The second is what is a competitive city? The third part is what have competitive cities done to become competitive? And the fourth is how do we help cities become competitive? So let's start with the imperative, the global urban transition. We know that cities are places for 80% of global economic activities and they house 55% of the global population. Two billion new residents will be moving to cities in uh, those uh, three decades between 2000 and 2030 and we know that one billion live in slums. And we know that with this imperative of urbanization there will be major demand for job creation. Let's start with the first part. Why is city competitiveness important? Now, we all know about the global urban transition. 55% of the global population lives in cities. Cities are 80% of our global economic activities is generated there. And we know that 2 billion new urban residents are moving to cities uh, between in the three decades from 2000 till 2030. And we know also that 1 billion persons are living in slums today. Urbanization provides important opportunities. No country has reached middle income status without urbanizing and no country has reached upper income status without vibrant cities. But this relationship between cities and economic prosperity is not always obvious or going hand in hand. We see on the one hand in East Asian countries, in uh, the left graph in the slide, GDP per capita is growing in a positive manner together with urbanization. On the right hand side of the graph, where you see selected countries from Africa, you notice that the outcomes are not always uh, in this way. There are countries that are urbanizing without GDP per capita growth. There are countries that are growing without, uh, with little urbanization. So therefore, a lot needs to be done in this uh, direction. We've worked with a database of 750 cities from uh, Oxford uh, Economics Global Cities uh, database. And we've analyzed these to look at uh, the differences between those cities. So we found great variations great variation in population, so the population of the largest city in uh, the database is almost 150 times higher than the smallest city in the database. We found also great variation in average annual growth in terms of population, almost like 12-13% gap. We found rates of job creation that vary widely between cities. We almost have a 17 percentage point gaps between the city that has the highest rate of job creation and the city that has the lowest rate of job creation, which actually in this case is actually a loss of jobs. We have also uh, great variations in annual uh, GDP growth and finally also in household disposable income. We needed to define what is a competitive city. So a competitive city, we've looked at the database and we found the top 10% of those cities share some characteristics that the other 90% of the cities do not share. First, they've achieved a rapid GDP growth uh, per annum of about 4.7 percent. They've achieved a rate of job creation and growth of 9.2 percent per annum and a rate of growth of disposable income of 9.8 percent per annum. So these are the three metrics that we've used to define competitive cities. GDP growth, job creation and the rate of growth and the rate of growth of disposable income for the households. But we've also found that they rely more on tradable sectors and they attracted higher shares of foreign direct investment. So the definition of a competitive city is one that facilitates firms and industries to grow jobs, productivity and income over time. If we took the top 10% of the cities, the, those most competitive cities if you will, and replicated their performance, their indicators for the entire set of cities in the database, then we would have created 19 more uh, million jobs, which is, as you can imagine, an important, uh, an important uh, scaling up. Now, any city 
can be competitive. This is not only the remit of the mega cities or the most famous cities. You will notice that the, these cities that are appearing on the map, whether it's Saltillo, Bucaramanga in Colombia, Meknes in, in, in Morocco, uh, Onicha in, in uh, Nigeria, Gaziantep in Turkey, and Coimbatore in India, these are not household names. They're secondary cities that have grown and have grown really well. So we wanted to learn what is it that those cities have done in order to have such impressive performance. And this, we have looked at uh, the next phase of our work, which is the analytical work. Now, what drives our analytical work is the demand side, the types of questions that the mayors and city leaders ask us at the World Bank. They ask us, how have other cities created jobs and growth? What should be the top priority for my city? And how do I get it done? These are very recurrent questions that our mayors and city leaders ask us. So how did we go about to respond to these questions? At first, in-depth literature review and consultations. We've analyzed the database of the 750 cities from uh, Oxford Economics Database. We done econometric analysis across and within countries. And we did six original in-depth case studies and lots of secondary case studies. And finally, we obviously have a running program of technical assistance in which we deploy these tools, working with our partner cities and local governments in order to help them improve their performance. Now, what did we learn? We learned at first that the top 10% of the cities, those two graphs on the left, and you will see in the orange bar, the tradable goods and services, in the gray bar, the non-tradable goods and services, you'll notice that the most competitive cities, those top 10% of our sample, the rate of growth of uh, employment creation in the tradable sectors is nearly the double of the rate of growth in the uh, non-tradable sectors. The range between upwards of 6% and something in the range of 3.5%. If you notice on the other hand of the graph, the other 90% of the cities, you'll notice that there's very little distinction between the rate of growth of tradable sectors and non-tradable sectors, and both are much lower, in average about 2%. Now, how did cities do that? Well, we've analyzed four areas of interventions, or what we call levers, uh, policy levers that cities have used in order to influence um, job creation and to strengthen their competitiveness. The first lever is institutions and regulations. These involve things like how does the city set up a business-friendly one-stop shop or type of arrangement that works with investors and firms. Uh, what type of permitting regime do they have to establish a firm? to uh, help issue a construction permit, an environmental permit, and all sorts of governance issues related, for instance, to special economic zones, industrial parks, etc. That's the institutions and regulations. Now, the second set is land and infrastructure. So how do cities enable access to land for the private sector and firms seeking to locate over there? And what type of infrastructure do they put in order to enable the private sector to uh, deliver on job creation and employment growth. The third lever of influence is the human capital, skills and innovation. What types of vocational training programs a city sets up, uh, the talent attraction programs, what type of improvements might happen to the overall educational system, which are not only cities, and we will discuss this uh, later on, the relationship between the city and uh, higher levels of government on any of those levers. And the last is the tertiary education, the university systems, uh, research and development type incentives. The fourth lever that is available is the lever of enterprise support and finance. What type of incentives might be available? What type of market intelligence and services does a local government provide for investors and cities to locate over there? Now, when we've looked at the economic evolution of cities, we charted on the horizontal graph bands of 15 cities in each one graph that have you know, similar, or, um, similar uh, per capita uh, income, and we've charted them in the range of growth of their per capita income. So they go from left to right with bands of 15 cities in order of increasing income. And we've looked on the vertical axis on the sector share of total gross value uh, addition. We've analyzed the cities, and you'll notice that there are three stages. And those three stages refer to three typologies of cities. The cities with the lower per capita income, you can think of them are more like market towns. They tend to be cities that have a lower share of manufacturing, construction, utilities, and mining, and a higher share of agriculture and consumer services. 
as you grow in terms of income, the cities in the middle are qualified more as production centers that aim to increase the value of production. And then the last group of cities are more the creative and financial services centers that are somewhat deindustrializing. You'll notice the share of manufacturing is declining and the share of high-end services, which is the top bar in the turquoise blue, is increasing. We've done econometrics between those three typologies of cities, the market towns, the production centers, and the creative and financial centers against our four levers, institutions and regulation, infrastructure, uh, the financing issues, and the human capital and innovation. And you notice that, I mean, there are not a lot of very, very obvious trends, but you notice the importance of institutions and regulations at different stages of development. You'll notice that the importance of infrastructure gradually increases over time during that intermediate phase of production center. And you'll notice the significant emphasis on human capital and innovation that characterizes the creative and financial centers. So institutions matter. Infrastructure matters, but infrastructure comes after institutions. You cannot have infrastructure without having a foundation of functional institutions and human innovation and capital are also a longer term development objective that matters but is not one that you can achieve in the short term but it's a gradual build up we also looked at the who i mean we are talking about cities but making cities competitive is not just the job of a mayor it is the job of a growth coalition which includes a collaboration with different stakeholders there are things that the mayor will have to do what we call the mayor's wedge and there are intergovernmental relationships where the mayor works either with other municipalities and mayors in a metropolitan area or works with higher levels of government, the provincial level or the national level on influencing certain levers. So to give you an example, access to land tends to be a local government, a city prerogative for the most of the time. Infrastructure in the same way. However, not all sorts of infrastructure is provided for by cities. Metropolitan transport systems can tend to be the function of a regional or provincial government. There are other things like you know, uh, the tax code, the uh, labor regulations. A city has nothing that it can do to influence these. These are remits of the national government. But a city can lobby national government in order to make more flexible tax codes or uh, labor regulations in order to uh, spur job creation and growth. To give you one example, the city of Gaziantep in Turkey, it has established a powerful um, uh, coalition between the city and the private sector. It's a function of the city council, they brought the different actors together and they work on improving the infrastructure. So how did city economic development strategies evolve? Now these are some quotes by some of our stakeholders, our partners, you know, for instance, in South Africa, you hear about you know, the lack of, you know, that the strategy can be a strategy on paper and the need to concretize that strategy. Uh, you hear from professionals the need to focus, that strategies can be overly ambitious and lacking focus and they need to concretize around specific jobs. How did the city of Changsha in China create the conditions for city competitiveness? And these I'm drawing on examples of the cities that have, um, you know, that we have studied. So they created a major uh, program to bring together different agencies in government in a mechanism that could cross silos, break silos and allow them for intergovernmental, interagency cooperation. We've also seen there has been more of an alignment of incentive and resources and a way of working you know, and listening to the problems happening on the ground and escalating these for resolution. So to sum up on the what, we have the four broad levers, institutions and regulation, land and infrastructure, enterprise uh, support and finance, and innovation and skills development. The importance is to focus on the comparative advantage, especially in the tradable sectors, and to work both in a horizontal city-wide approach, including building coalitions between the public sector and the private sector, but also work in ver vertical sector-specific or issue-specific uh, combinations uh, that would allow mobilization of national government. The WHO is working on getting the economic development-oriented mindset and public-private growth coalition. And the HOW is obviously the question of decentralization, the need to delegate more powers to cities 
to enable them to have more influence on those four levers of influence that allow them to work on their city competitiveness. Now, the most important thing is there is no magic bullet. You know, is a one-stop shop the solution? Uh, you create a monument, you know. These have to be embedded within a growth strategy that has to be adapted to the city's needs, to the city's comparative advantage, and to the stakeholders within the city. Now, how do we help cities become competitive? And that's the fourth and last area of our presentation. What does the World Bank Group do? Starting with analytics, what kind of city competitiveness interventions are associated with good economic outcomes? So we do competitive city snapshots, we do sectoral deep dives, and we do economy-wide constraint analysis. We also do implementation support. So we work with the cities, we roll our sleeves, we work with them on the who and the how to carry out the city level initiatives to increase city competitiveness. That includes institutional analysis, tools, resources and case studies, and we also do executive training. We also work by bringing expertise. So we have internal expertise, the public-private dialogue, we have work that leverages you know, all sorts of issues from urban development and on trade and competitiveness, and we work with external partners such as the Harvard Business School, McKinsey Global Institute, etc. Finally, we work on piloting interventions, either through our lending operations, so for instance, in, they vary in, in a variety of countries that range anywhere from Burundi to Morocco, where we work on issues of city and local government competitiveness. We also work using reimbursable advisory services, uh, where uh, we work on specific deep dives with um, national governments in both South Africa and Malaysia, for instance, on strengthening their city competitiveness. And finally, we do uh, analytical and advisory services, such as helping you know, cities like Shanghai develop its 2050 uh, plan, or working at national level, for instance, the uh, series of urbanization reviews that we have done. So the following slides are examples of some of those benchmarking that we do in cities. So we try to find comparators with which to compare cities, cities with similar per capita income, with similar employment growth rates, and look at those cities, their sectoral compositions, to try to advise cities on what is it that they can do to enhance their competitiveness. We also do industrial structure analysis. We do uh, cluster analysis and development. We help cities look at their innovation systems. We um, analyze startups in various cities in terms of sectors, growth, etc., to give cities an idea of what they and other comparator cities are doing. We do institutional analysis and a variety of other analytical tools to help mayors and local governments strengthen their city competitiveness and have the information that they need to take the appropriate policies. And we also do executive training, including in Quito in June 2016, as well as in South Africa. These are all examples of what the World Bank can bring to its partner cities and city leaders in terms of helping them think about city competitiveness. We invite you to go and look at our Competitive Cities for Jobs and Growth work on the World Bank site. Thank you very much.